Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 21 of Photo Critiques. And in Photo Critiques, um, people send me in some of their best work and I critique each image with suggestions on how they can improve it and hopefully we all improve our photography by watching these critiques. Today I'm pleased to critique the work of KC Chua. Uh, KC sent me in four uh, images and we'll get to those in a minute. If you guys could do me a favor though and subscribe to my YouTube channel and share the videos. And if you've already subscribed, I really appreciate it. Okay, now in this first shot, um, it's a nice study in leading lines. As you could see, these um, railroad tracks help the viewer lead their eyes through the shot looking at points of interest. In this specific shot, as you can see, the sky is, is just bright gray. Nothing there. So almost half of this shot has nothing really for us to look at. That's okay if you make something very compelling to look at in the other parts of the photograph. And in this shot, I think it's more the processing and a little bit the focusing. If you look in, there's nothing really super tight in focus. Everything is a little bit soft. And it could be part of the developing, but I think in the focus area, it's more just the way it was shot. So there's not a real tight focus anywhere in this part of the shot where we're looking. Also, in the development of the photo, there's it's just kind of flat. There's nothing really compelling. I think if KC would have developed this shot and made it real graphic down here, real striking blacks and striking grays. It would have brought out kind of the flavor of the or the atmosphere of the area. Uh, I have a Lightroom training video where I develop a horse is looking through like a, a window and it's the horse's head and the wood of the old stable where the horse is kept and I developed it in, in a way that it brought out the the naughtiness and the graphic look of the wood. And I think if KC did something like that, it would help increase the interest of this image. And also be careful in focus. You're going to have to use an f-stop of 11 to 16. And you're going to want to focus on something specific. Don't just focus like right here because it's in the middle. I would focus right here. Make something in perfect focus something that the eyes lead to right away and that's in perfect focus and then everything else could be in, in a little less focus and I don't know if it's a word and, word and I said it before is disfocus so that's my suggestion on this I think I would have processed it a little differently because the sky is is making half the shot really uninteresting so you really want to make this part super compelling in this shot here again if you look I mentioned many times is in when you're photographing anything with eyes you want to focus on the eyes and in this um, tiger the eyes aren't in perfect focus it looks like more like the focus was pulled around here because you could see this is in better focus this area here than where the tiger's eyes are additionally when you're photographing um, animals or people there's kind of rules of where you cut them off and and Part of the bat, you know, obviously the back of this lion's body, or lion, the tiger, excuse me, the tiger's body is cut off um, over here. So I would have probably cropped in tighter and just got maybe the head, shoulders in. You could crop off above the elbow and um, it would be okay. And I would have had him off to the left a little bit with more empty space to the right. You also always want the way the person or the animal is looking to have more space. So in this case I would have took a tighter crop and make sure that I focused on his eyes. And um, of course he might have been limited by his lens. This was the closest his lens would let him focus. You always want to try to do that in camera. You don't want to crop afterwards. but. If you can't, you could crop this afterwards. And um, I made a point of noting lately that I'm not going to modify or do anything to other people's photographs because it's just not right. I shouldn't be modifying other people's photographs. So just imagine if this was cropped over above his, um, you know, just having his head, the tiger's head in the shot and a little more space to the right. I think that would be a stronger shot. 
Here's another one. This uh, receding line um, going off into the distance. Um, again, the sky is slightly more interesting than the previous two shots ago with the railroad uh, yard. In this case, um, the colors are nice. It's still, it's just, there's not, the sky isn't overly compelling. This might be a site or a shot that you might, might want to revisit. And um, in doing so, you might want to get a little closer to this bush here. Um, just a little closer. It's just a little bit too far away. I'd have that one a little more in the foreground and then these would be more spaced out as, as it goes down through the receding line. So it would help lead the viewer's eye through the shot. So I would try to um, revisit the shot when the skies have uh, more foreboding clouds, maybe uh, maybe a different time of day when the maybe the sun would be over here rising or setting and that would be a nice shot too. So this is a shot that's interesting but I'd revisit it um, when you have different conditions and hopefully it would improve the shot. This final shot is a kind of a study in framing. These um, little branches falling down in here help frame the shot in this building on the left. Uh, this is another shot that I would revisit at a different time of day. The um, sun is obviously very harsh. You can see this, you know, shadow here, and it's kind of a harsh. But it's he did a nice job of exposing it so that these um, these uh, rolling hills are exposed nicely. But I would uh, try to um, revisit this at a different time of day, and I wouldn't. I would eliminate this building. Looks like a school, possibly, and I would um, probably stand more over in here and use this little tiny valley as a leading line and help that would help the viewer lead their eye through the shot and hopefully when you revisit this shot the sky is more interesting you have some interesting clouds up here so the this would help lead your eye through the shot and you'd have some the your your eyes would resolve on a point where you have a really interesting sky so that's what I would suggest on this shot is you revisit it and you um, take a different perspective by standing on the other side of this little hedgerow and shooting this way so you get this as a leading line but again and I mentioned in many uh, videos work the scene don't let that be your one and only shot you know come up stand up on top of this one and shoot this way go over here and shoot over here uh, how about stand, walking up here and shooting back this way? There's um, all different ways you know you could shoot. You could come up way up here and shoot from way up above and shoot down on the buildings. I'm sure there's probably more buildings over here. Um, just try all different shots and um, work the scene. And I think there's actually a much better photograph lurking in this scene than we see right now. Um, I do like the framing though. That's a nice idea and the the you know the tree here and this building help frame the shot but I would say that there's a better shot lurking you just have to work the scene so I'd like to thank Casey for sending me in his images I appreciate it and I enjoyed critiquing them and I hope everyone got something out of these uh, critiques they um, hopefully I give a little tips here and there to help everyone with their photography and I appreciate everyone who subscribed to my channel thank you very much and I'll talk to you guys soon